the session. So thank you for coming back for After Lunch. Uh, I'm Aaron Quigley from the University of St. Andrews. I'm your session chair and comedian. Um, we have the first talk on the bicycle barometer. And this is work from uh, Belgium, but it's going to be presented by Sandy on behalf of her co-authors, Andrew and Karen. Thank you very much, Sandy. Okay, thank you, Aaron. So, yeah, as Aaron said, my name is Sandy Klaas. I come from the Research X Design Group in, uh, the, of the Department of Architecture um, of the KU Leuven in Belgium. And I will present um, this work on a public interface that is specifically designed for cyclists. So its design consists of um, a pressure sensitive floor mat, a handrail that, uh, that provides cyclists with support uh, and also has a button mounted on, and a low resolution LED display. So although we're in the session of large display interactions, mine is actually very small. It's a low resolution screen, but the interaction is quite large, so maybe that compensates a bit. Uh, the <laughs> The, the outcome of this, um, or this, this setup is the result of an extensive user-centered design process, and we evaluated the outcome in the wild for five days. Um, and in the paper, we describe also eight design recommendations. So why this focus on cyclists? Well, cycling is being promoted as an alter alternative for um, urban mobility issues. And um, even here, I noticed um, today is bike to work day, so you can use the public bicycle infrastructure for free as a way to promote cycling. And as a result, more and more cyclists are present in the city. And we saw that as an opportunity to engage them as potential HCI users. And cyclists are already confronted with urban interfaces, such as these bicycle count displays that um, are present in the city. They show the number of cyclists that pass by, but are also a good way of involving cyclists in a, uh, or give them the feeling of being part of a community. Now, these cycle counters, they capture more data than just the number of passers-by. They also capture how fast the cyclist is going, um, what type of cyclist, the weather at the time, um, and our local government, which uh, was the city of Leuven in Belgium, they asked us if we could design something that um, would open up all these data in the public sphere. So this was our research question. How can cyclists be informed by an urban visualization? And then we had a second, um, we saw an opportunity to further exploit this um, idea and, and um, look at the urban visualization as a polling device. So our question, our second question was, how can cyclists efficiently participate in public polling? Which is more emphasis on interaction. Now our local government also had other requirements for the system, so they really wanted to employ it. They, um, it needed to be mobile, and therefore it also had to be robust, because it could not be anchored in the ground, this display. And it also needed to be affordable. We had our own requirements. That was that it should allow or it should show multiple data dimensions. And therefore, um, we designed it for uh, cyclists in waiting positions, for instance, at an intersection. And we, it should also allow social interaction. Now, we looked at um, existing work, um, amongst others, this Looking Glass project where um, they looked at the uh, communicating interactivity towards pedestrians. And um, towards cyclists, we looked at open heart helmet project, for instance, where they um, visualized the heart rate data of a cyclist and uh, communicated it to its environment and to its fellow cyclists. And for the public polling and towards or um, public polling for uh, civic engagement, we looked at uh, Vote As You Go and Visualizing Mill Road. So this is an overview of our design and evaluation process, uh, which I will now deepen into. So we started with observations of cyclists in waiting positions um, at intersections, and we noticed how they use their hands or their feet um, to, to rest. This is also something we saw in already existing urban furniture, such as this uh, hand rail and footrest that's being um, installed in Denmark. 
And we took this idea and did some quick exploratory design studies with them. So this is at our campus, a bicycle lane, and we asked random passers-by, random cyclists, to stop at this pole and read the question on the paper display. And it was a yes or no question, uh, which we asked to answer it with their hands um, on this handrail or with their feet on this footrest, while we observed how they behaved. Um, we saw that they were wiggling with their, with their wheel, so this inspired us also to, um, to um, design a third method, which is using the wheel as an inter in input. So we further developed the, these into low-tech mock-ups. And this was the evaluation setup. So on one hand, we had a, the, a computer screen with the polling question on it. On the other hand, we had our three mock-ups, the other, other um, side of the intersection. We had our mock-ups. Um, and a researcher present with a Wizard of Oz remote. That um, for each interaction method, we stopped 30 cyclists, and they had to fill in a short survey. Um, we also did a semi-structured interview with them. And each of the um, interaction methods also had two alternative designs. So for the handrail, we had a design with um, large buttons you could grab with your whole hand, or one with um, small buttons you could push with a finger. We had a, a, a vertical layout and a horizontal layout for the footrest. We had a layout uh, for the floor mat that um, needed to be, um, yeah, you needed to go back and forth with your wheel, or the other one um, on the right is when you um, needed to choose a compartment to, um, to give your vote. So the outcome is that, um, the footrest uh, was rated as very uncomfortable. People not liked to gaze up and down. Um, but the handrail was, was comfortable, and also they provided a reliable feedback, uh, people said. Um, but we also uh, noticed how the floor mat was very attractive and fun, and people uh, were eager to participate because of they were curious of those floor mats. So we decided to combine those. For the LED display, for the visualization, we did a co-design workshop together with cyclists and local government. And um, we offered them all the bicycle count data, um, and we were also open for their data needs. And this led us to design a, a kind of a story design for the LED display. So that started with a frustration. So cy they, those cyclists had several frustrations. Um, one, one of them was that um, some, other, um, some cyclists drive dangerously fast, brushing other cyclists, um, uh, crossing over intersections without looking, giving them, normal cyclists, a bad name. So this led us to come up with this question. What do you think of fast cyclists for polling? And it was also shown in the data. So the top speed is, is, um, is, is much higher than average speed, uh, which supported this frustration. Now about implementation, so this was our final, how our final prototype looked like. Pressure sensitive floor mat, um, which was connected to a button on the handrail for support. And an LED display where um, ins instructions were put below. So how to use the system were just written underneath. Now, it was a challenge to put a visualization on such a low-resolution screen. So we uh, divided, so this is a bar graph. Um, we divided it into intersections, and you could navigate through the bar graph with your wheel. And next up is the top versus average speed. And this one um, was a line graph. Also, you need, could explore using your wheel. So these are the days, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. After a one-day pilot study, we did an in the wild study. Um, we did it at two locations because we wanted to uh, evaluate the impact of the environment. So we did the first two days, we did a uh, setup in the uh, city, and the second, or the 
third day uh, we did a setup in um, a suburban area for three days we did that. So both, uh, at both locations uh, it was placed at an intersection. All interactions were logged. Um, we also put a video camera in uh, a car that was um, present um, and it recorded all activity around the setup. And the researcher uh, was there to do interviews uh, with participants, but also with people who hinted towards participation. So in total, we did uh, 63 interviews. And we, um, based upon the video, we uh, logged all behavior and categorized it according to this model of Memorovich and his colleagues. Um, dividing it to uh, passive to and active engagement over discovery. Which was note, uh, what was most noticeable was that only 13% of the all passersby completely ignored the installation. So the eight design recommendations, I will just discuss them briefly. We had several te teasers um, that gradually announced the interactivity. But we noticed that, or we learned that the combination of this passive teaser with an interactive teaser, where a cyclist that drove over this floor mat, um, the screen would react, that this combination worked best. And then we, um, in addition to the existing landing zone that Miller and his colleagues described, um, we learned that um, cyclists um, halted or stopped uh, meters before they saw the installation in order to be able to inspect what was going on. So we called this the situational overview. Then um, using this familiar interaction met method first, a button, um, gives users co uh, confidence uh, that the system works but also that, they're, that they work, that they know how to use it. Um, which was a good introduction for a less familiar method we learned. Then, although the floor was, was maybe less intuitive, people, cyclists, found it was designed specifically for them and it made them eager to participate. It was considered to be exclusive. Um, but not only the physical qualities of the installation um, appealed to them, um, also the relevancy of the content. In this case, in the suburbs, it was an endangered intersection. Um, so people, cyclists, wanted to participate because they wanted to give their opinion on this intersection. We saw that participation rate in the city was much less, and we expect this has something to do with the fact that this intersection is perceived less dangerous. But also we suspect this has something to do with the fact that um, cyclists in the city are, do shorter trips and thus have less time. So the location of this visualization, namely a bicycle lane, already gives meaning to the visualization. But we learned that also the interactivity, the fact that they had to use their wheel, um, added to the sense-making process. And then lastly, the social interaction. Um, cyclists, they take up more space. So it was, um, social interaction was often limited because they had to shout to each other. And we also saw how m more users on one bike could work together, like this mother that would steer her wheel and then one of the children would press the button and then they could play together. So for now, the about the validation, um, a, more c uh, a more permanent prototype is being built by a company in public displays, namely Qlight, which is uh, active in Belgium and the Netherlands. And it looks like this. Um, we're very curious to um, try it out this summer. Um, the province um, and the city of Leuven will uh, implement it. And we're curious how to, or to validate our results. So in summary, we learned that um, the high participation rate demonstrates that this, uh, there is this kind of a societal demand for these kinds of interfaces. Second, that there are opportunities to um, develop public interfaces for specific user in, uh, groups. 
And third, that such interfaces um, not only should be or could be about polling, but also should be about informing. Okay, that was it. Hey, whoa, here we go. Okay, so um, how we're going to work the questions during this session is uh, the SVs are kindly going to run around with the microphone. So I'd like to actually ask people to stay in their seats just to, to make it more accessible so we don't all have one little microphone that we all queue up to. So just put up your hand. You don't need to keep it up for long if you, if you want to ask a question. Um, and then I'll send the microphone in your direction. No? Any questions? We're going to, well, I'm going to start off then. So in the paper itself, you allude to this question of using alternative sensing technologies. Um, so this question of, let's say, using computer vision, for example. So you put up your left hand to give one answer. You put up your right hand to give another, another answer. And you cycle by mm -hmm. at 20, 30 kilometers. I have no idea. Yeah. I obviously don't cycle very much. Um, uh, miles an hour. Could you talk about that? Because in your future work, you, you discuss you know, other instantiations. So um, yeah. why, why is the physicality so important, do you think? Well, actually, uh, we wanted to explore that, that option as well. Like um, now it's for cyclists in waiting positions, mm -hmm. and we wanted to explore it while they, they were driving too. So, which is more of the um, that they could pull while cycling, like like in a more extensive uh, way. And actually, we're we're currently planning to uh, set up research um, about that mm -hmm. um, on cycle hi highways because here it's a it, it's a city, and I think it's important that it should look uh, integrated, uh, mm -hmm. more urban. Mm -hmm. um, therefore, this looks like a more like a, a yeah a traffic light. Um, um, design, um, urban infrastructure design. Mm -hmm. So I think that's uh, important when you imp implement something like this in a city. Okay. Just, so yeah. it's part of the, in it's integrated into the landscape, the architectural yeah, landscape. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So there's a difference in context. Okay, so here we go. Hi, Carl Goodwin from University of Saskatchewan. I'm interested in the novelty effect since this was only yeah. deployed for five days. And uh, um, I just wonder what you think would happen. Will people s just start to ride by? Uh, after after a while, or have you thought about yeah. how do you keep them engaged and how do you keep them stopping? Now, I realize well, sometimes they're stopping anyways, but how do you keep them looking at the display? Yeah, the thing is, of course, uh, we mentioned that in the paper too, uh, the, the novelty effect, but the f the, we suspect that it's a mobile installation, so it will, be, it will travel around the city. There are several counters uh, throughout the city, and we will install it at several places, so it will also always be novel for some uh, cyclists uh, commuting to work. Um, but also the question changes. It's not that it always will show this question. Um, you can ad uh, adapt um, to other uh, um, yeah, polling. So I guess, and as we notice too, that people are interested to give their opinion, or cyclists want to give their opinion, so we think that's, um, that's a way to overcome it. Okay, so do we have one last question before we thank our speaker for her talk? No? They're all post-lunch blues. No, is that it? 